Well, guys, I came across something I think that uh, you all are going to find pretty, pretty interesting, finally. Uh, ran onto it, actually, by mistake. Uh, the other day, I went down, uh, didn't even have the intention of, you know, Bigfoot hunting or anything, and uh, took my mom and my, uh, my nephew and my little boy, Hunter, uh, was going to go fishing. So we ended up at the place I like to fish. It's a uh, secluded place down on the lake. It's uh, where we had the incident with the uh, thing looking through the tree, the stick throwing, the hooping. But this was our first time back there this year, you know, to, to fish. And uh, when we got there, we noticed that the water was up. It was up higher than normal. And I uh, also noticed that there was a tent over kind of close to where we, you know, where we camp and where we fish. And, you know, we kind of decided, hey, we're not going to bother them. You know, they was out swimming, and uh, fishing probably wasn't going to be good anyways because they were swimming all over pretty much the only area we would have been able to throw our poles because the water was up, and it was up into the trees. So there was really only this one spot we could have threw out, set our chairs, not been in the mud and everything. So it was like, oh, we'll just come back tomorrow. It's supposed to be nice tomorrow. Uh, so we left, and we came back the next day as we planned. And... The people were leaving, and I asked them, you know, I was like, hey, y'all doing any good, you know, catching any fish? And they were like, yeah, we had, you know, a lot of fish. And uh, they had some stringers that had some pretty nice fish on them, not, you know, nothing huge or anything, but they had some decent fish, and I asked them if they were going to stay the night. And he was, no, no, you know, we're leaving. And I said, well, if y'all are going to, you know, camp or whatever, we'll go on. I didn't want to bother them. They was there first, and I kind of, you know, believe if somebody's there first, I don't go in and just try to push somebody out. But he said, no, he said, we're going to leave. I had a pretty wild thing go on last night. He said, I'm not really sure what had happened. But he said, it was kind of the first thing that ever happened. Now, these guys, now, they was probably about my age. They were in their 40s. Uh, they had their kids with them. Their kids were probably 15, 16, probably somewhere around that age. And uh, they had their two wives with them, so I'm guessing two families. But anyways, he said that uh, they had got ready to go to bed. It was getting late evening. The sun hadn't quite gone down. And they heard a bunch of whistling in the woods. And they thought it was some kind of bird that they'd never seen. He said, you know, he, he was an avid hunter, fisherman. They fish a lot. And he says, first time I'd ever camped this spot. But he said, they heard a lot of, like, whistling. He said, you know, really didn't pay a lot of attention to it. The kids kept swimming until late, you know, late evening. And uh, he said, as, as time went on, they started hearing some uh, breaking and tree beating and in the back of my mind I'm already thinking okay y'all's ran into kind of what I ran into down here you know he's going to have a pretty good scary story and that's going to be it well as he kept talking he said I, he said I, I actually got pissed off he said because I think somebody tried to run us out of here and I said what do you mean tried to run you out of here and he said well they started throwing stuff up hitting our uh, tent and uh you know, kind of scared the ladies and everything. He said, we, we arm. He said, I stepped out, and, you know, was hollering, you know, get away from our tent, you know, leave us alone, we're camping, we're armed, you know, don't be stupid, just things like that. He said, we would go back in and we would lay down and it would start up again. He said, finally, he got mad. He said, about, you know, two or three in the morning, he said, I, I was fed up. The kids were scared. They went to sleep. He said, you could hear it. Their trucks were parked kind of alongside the road where the floodwaters had been, so it was really muddy. He said, so I just walked out, took my gun, 3030, that's what I seen in his truck, and he said, I shot it straight up in the air. And he said, as soon as I shot, <clears throat> there was a whoop. He said, I no more turn around and get back in the tent, and something slams the side of my truck. He said, I thought they shut my truck door, had been in my truck. He said, so I went running up there with my gun with his friend. And he said, when we got up there, of course, there was nobody around. He said, so we locked the door, shut the doors, nothing was missing, went to sleep next morning when they woke up he walked me over to see his truck and the side of his truck is dented in there's a huge dent in the side of this guy's truck and there's a huge rock laying on the ground and I'm thinking wow they went from throwing sticks to throwing rocks it kind of sounds like what happened to us the other night you know the other at the other place we was at which is oh as a crow flies it's probably I'm going to guess three, four miles down, maybe. But, uh, anyways, I was 
wow, man, that's a lot of damage to your truck. And he said, yeah. He said, whoever it was, you know, he said, they, they kept throwing rocks. They weren't as big as that one, but all night long, rocks were landing all around in the water. And he said it was just, he said, you know, a bunch of assholes is what he called them. But uh, he said they were snorting and growling and trying to sound like wild pigs is what he said. And I'm thinking, nah, not pigs, man. Well, anyways, he said he found some footprints. So we walked over and alongside the road where they had smashed the truck and kind of between the truck, they had their truck on the road and then there was the muddy spot and then there was their tent at the water's edge. In between, I would say no more than 10 foot from their tent, something had walked through there and I took a picture of the footprints. So here are the footprints. And here's a picture of the damage that was done to his truck. So really pretty, pretty wild there. And I was like, man, that is crazy. He goes, yeah, and whoever they were, they must have gotten in the back of my truck and was looking for fishing poles or whatever. And they had touched my truck because they left a print on the back window. And I also talked him in to let me take a picture of the window. And here's a picture of the print that was found on the window. And after looking at all that, I, I knew in my mind what I thought it was. And they wanted to remain anonymous. They, they was thinking if somebody was mad at them, and, you know, they didn't want any more trouble. But he was thinking people, I'm thinking something different. What do you guys think? I mean, you know my stories, what's happened at this same spot. I know what I think. But anyways, they left. We settled in for the evening and started getting, you know, late evening, our poles were out in the water. Here's our, here's our poles, you know, where we were fishing. A little bit later on, I heard what sounded like a tree break behind us, so I just turned with my camera and took a picture. I'm not going to tell you all if I see anything in the picture or not. You all take a look. My friend, she uh, says she saw something. She was actually the first one that said she did see something. So I'd be curious to pay ghosts looking at this uh, picture and anyone else that may see something in the picture. Like I said, I'm not going to show you all things that I see because I want to make sure you see them too so I don't influence your view. Um, the night went on, uh, we fished into the dark with a, with one lantern. Started hearing whoops, uh, started hearing whistling, and I just went ahead, since I had my mom with me and the kids and everything, I was not carrying heavy, uh, got a 45 caliber on me. And uh, usually I carry more, but we weren't, you know, anticipating being at this spot that long. And I didn't have my brother-in-law with me. And just, you know, wasn't enough what I wanted there to stay with the kids. So we loaded up and we left. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed what I found for you. I think you're going to be really interested. As far as the other place I want to go back and visit that I told you where we had the rock throwing, they have that closed right now. The county's doing some work in there. So as soon as they let me back in there, I will go back in and revisit that. Right now they've had, a, I guess, a lot of damage to the roadway. It's tearing up boats and stuff. So the, the gentleman told me when I tried to get in there that they are going to get it fixed soon. So I will be back in there. But I knew you all would really enjoy this video because it does have some substance to it. It has uh, what I would call uh, evidence. So it was very interesting to me. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed what I got to see the photos. So. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't don't forget to subscribe if you're watching so you don't miss our new videos coming. There's going to be a lot more investigations going on. Don't forget to hit the bell so you get a reminder of our videos coming out. I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, just stay tuned and we've got some more coming. Take care.